you'd be at a higher risk of tetanus with those animals. So you want to make sure that there's a tetanus antigen in that seven way um, when you're castrating. So there's a lot of seven ways out there to choose from and some of them have the, the tetanus and some of them do not. The Beef Research School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. It's probably an area that um, a lot of producers don't focus enough on um, and they should definitely talk with their veterinarians and figure out what level of risk their herds are at because the vaccines that we choose uh, will definitely um, change depending on the level of risk. If your herd is closed and that means that you're not purchasing any animals including bulls, uh, a lot of people think that they have a close herd um, but they're still purchasing bulls, that your herd actually isn't truly really close. So if you have no purchase, um, you should be at very low risk of, um, of disease, but you can be at a much higher risk if you're purchasing in bulls, even greater if you're purchasing in heifers, replacement heifers, um, mature replacement animals, or uh, bred animals, because you can actually be bringing in disease not with the, um, with the, the replacement animal, but with the calf that's uh, in utero still. So deciding on what level um, of risk is dependent on, on those areas. So if you're at a lower risk um, in terms in your herd, uh, using killed vaccines is, is a good option. Um, and using vaccines that um, just have antigens in them for IVR, BVD, um, PI3, those types of diseases. It's probably all that's necessary. If you have a more open herd, you want to be looking at using vaccinations that have um, antigens for leptovirus as well as um, Campylobacter or Vibrio. So that's in terms of reproductive diseases. Now if you're bringing in feeder animals where uh, pneumonia is more of a risk, then you want to make sure that you're using vaccinations that have uh, somnogen in it, so something that will protect against Staphylococcus somnus. Um, also Menheimia hemolytica, you'll want to make sure that that antigen is in there and uh, possibly also Pastorella multocida. Uh, in terms of seven ways, you should be using seven way vaccines, so clostridial vaccines in all of your animals. Um, it can be a higher risk if you're castrating um, the calves and if you, you'd be at a higher risk of tetanus with those animals. So you want to make sure that there's a tetanus antigen in that seven way um, when you're castrating. So there's a lot of seven ways out there to choose from and some of them have the, the tetanus and some of them do not. Uh, there are some new vaccines coming out. Uh, one was released in the last few years here and it's an uh, intranasal vaccine. Um, and the reason that vaccine is fairly interesting is it actually bypasses uh, maternal antibody um, uh, protection. So the maternal antibodies the calf gets when it nurses for the first time and gets those from the colostrum and those last for a period of time. Uh, and if we give them an injectable vaccine, their immune system may not respond as well to the vaccine um, because there is that overriding effect of the maternal antibodies. So using this intranasal bypasses that by creating a local response right in the nose and giving local protection. Yeah, preventing injection site lesions is very important. Um, using the correct size of needle uh, is, is one part. Um, so making sure that you're giving the injection to a calf um, with a, most often an 18 gauge needle. So this is a newborn or a two month old, sorry, calf. Um, 18 gauge needle, it's probably about five eighths long, five eighths of an inch long. Um, that makes sure that you actually get the vaccine um, sub-Q, because most of our vaccines are subcutaneous versus IM. Um, making sure then that you're using a clean needle um, and changing that needle out about every um, 10 animals is ideal. 
never um, take a, a dirty needle, and by dirty needle I mean a needle that has either been dropped for sure, but even a needle that has just been used to inject even one animal, uh, don't put that back into the, um, the vaccine container, so the bottle, because you will contaminate the bottle um, with bacteria that was picked up as that needle went into the animal's skin. And then you'll pass that on to old animals that get a vaccine from that bottle. Um, and, and then making sure that you're um, injecting in a site that's clean. So removing any debris that's really obvious from the, um, from the animal's neck. Sometimes when we're putting them through the chute, they'll, um, they'll get uh, manure on their necks. So making sure that you avoid any of those areas is very important. Yeah, if a broken needle is suspected, um, the first thing to do would be to identify the animal, so making sure that you write down its dangle tag and its CCIA tag as well, um, writing down the date that it occurred, um, the approximate region uh, where the injection was given. You can also give, um, give a look and see if you can find the needle and pull it out, because often you can easily find them if you know where approximately you had the needle. So pulling it out, but still mark and identify that animal regardless of whether you um, you find the needle or not. Uh, if you're selling the animal, make sure that you let the buyer know that there was a, a, a broken needle and the approximate location um, of the occurrence. Um, and then in terms of uh, preventing, uh, probably one of the most important things with broken needles is to make sure that you do not use a bent needle. Uh, if you use a bent needle, it's more than most likely that that needle is going to break on the next animal. So as soon as you bend a needle by accident, make sure that you um, replace that needle, needle straight away before you do any more vaccinations. And in terms of, um, of also preventing broken needles, proper catching of their heads is very important. There's a lot of different types of shoots out there, some that have shoulder holders, some that have neck extenders. So making sure that you get good extension of the head so the animal is properly secured, squeezed. Uh, is very important um, to prevent movement of the animal while you're giving an injection and that'll reduce the chance of the animal uh, or of yourself breaking that needle in that animal.